Morning, morning. So start a new chapter. So uh, always, always good when you feel like you know you're moving, moving your way through, the, through, through the material. Okay, and the chapter uh, is on automata is on uh, finite state machines. So just by way of, uh, well, of some kind of introduction. So um, when you look at a Turing machine, there really are two components. There's the, the sort of box the, where the gears and levers are, and then there's the tape. And the tape serves a number of purposes. For example, that's where you put the input and that's where you read the output. But uh, really the main purpose that the tape has is that it's some kind of memory. If you want to understand what a Turing machine does, really, uh, the, the sort of most natural thing to do is to uh, try uh, taking it apart. That's how, you know, that's sort of an, a reasonable way to understand things is to break them down into component parts. So we will ask something along the lines of what happens, wh what can you do with a Turing machine that doesn't have any memory? If you take the tape out, or if you allow the tape to only give input, if you take the tape out, what, what, what can you do and what can't you do? So that is to say, we want to understand the power of the, uh, of the sort of CPU of the box alone. All right. So, uh, of course, a Turing machine CPU box uh, without a tape, without a memory for scratch tape, is just simply a box that has finitely many states. So we're going to call these finite state machines. So a finite state machine or finite state automata, I'll always call it a machine, but you see both words. A finite state machine is composed of five things here. So we're looking at, uh, some of these are familiar. Q, of course, is going to be a set of states. There'll be finitely many of them. And there's got to be a start state. And there's, uh, there's going to be an alphabet for the tape. And there's going to be a transition function. And the only thing perhaps brand new to a person here is the F. So there's a finite set of states one of which is a start state, and our start state is always going to be Q0, just because you might as well, I mean, you know, why, why argue with it? So we're always going to do Q0. And uh, there is a, a final, uh, there's a subset of accepting states or final states that we'll talk about for just a second, and then a finite input alphabet set sigma and a next state function or transition function um, uh, delta there. So, uh, so it's this here, it's the F that uh, might be new. So when you look at that picture, what you see is that uh, you've got the same box. looks like a Turing machine box. In fact, I copied the picture. looks like a Turing machine box, and it's got a start, and it's got a light, a red light on top. It doesn't say halt, and now it says accept, and uh, there's some stuff on the tape. So what's going to happen is that we have to get input into the machine. If we want to say, what can the machine do? Why, we somehow have to have the machine to have some capability. So we're going to feed it input on the tape. It won't be able to write to the tape. It'll just be able to read from the tape. Okay, so it doesn't have scratch memory. It has states, but it doesn't have scratch memory. But it, uh, it has the ability to take input. So the machine, you know, beep, beep, buzz, buzz. You hear noises from the inside. And at some point, the machine consumes all of the input. And th at that point, the machine uh, will stop because it's run out of input. So it either lights the red light or else it does not light the red light. So the red light no longer means the machine stopped. The red light now is the machine's way of describing that it is. Uh, it either likes the input or it doesn't like the input. That is to say, for example, if you have a machine that accepts a string that contains three ones, like this string does, then you press the start button, and after a couple minutes of you know clinking and clanking, then the red light will light, meaning yes, this string had three ones. Okay. So, of course, lots of examples. So, uh, I, I have a machine here with an input alphabet consisting of uh, 0 and 1, the two, the two bits, bit, the bit strings. Uh, it's going to be the input strings. So, the string 0, the character 0, and the string 1, the character 1. So, the set of states for this machine is Q0, Q1, and Q2. Of course, you recognize them. It has one accepting state, Q2. Can you see it's got a double circle there? double circle. So if the machine ends in that state, then the red light comes on. It'll accept strings that contain at least two ones. And I, I know that just by looking at the diagram, I can see that if you give it a, a, a string that has a bunch of zeros, it'll stay in state Q0 for a while. And then if you give it a one, if the input string has a one, then it moves to Q1. And if the input string has another one, then it moves to Q2. So in some sense, state Q2 somehow means uh, have seen two ones. 
and then once it's seen two ones, it's happy, and it stays in state Q2 forever. And it, uh, when the machine stops, when the, when the input runs out, when the machine stops, the red light will be lit. So it's easy to, uh, to give the transition function for, for this picture uh, uh, to, as a table. So we'll usually draw pictures, but uh, the table has some advantages. One advantage, for example, is that it's obvious as input. You could write a program that simulated this machine and give it, you know, give your program sort of this table to, as, as a description of how to act. You see, I use a plus sign to indicate the double circle state, to indicate the, the accepting state. That, that's just, you, know, you have to use something, and plus sign is something that many authors do. Of course, delta is a function. So for example, delta Q11 is Q2. So if you're in state Q1 and you see a one, then you go to, then you go to state Q2. Okay, so it's really a very uh, simple variation on the on what we've done with Turing machines. The only thing is that you can't move the tape. You know, you can't say something like uh, back up on the tape two spaces, or, uh, or or slide to the end of the ones and write a new one. You, you just you, it doesn't have that capability. The read write head is not a read write head. It's a read head, read only head. So the machine just consumes its input, and then at the end you look to see whether the red light is on. So this machine, just, just to try to convince you that these machines are not totally incompetent, this machine accepts strings that are valid decimal representations of, imp of integers. So for example, if you give this machine a, a plus 3, 4, then the machine will end in the accepting state. So l let's go through it. So you give the machine a plus 3, 4, that's a string consisting of three characters. All right, so it consumes the first character, the plus, and it sees this transition here and moves to Q1. I've grouped together the two plus and minus because they both do the same thing. So it's just graphically simpler to make them one arrow instead of two. So you move to state Q1. Now the machine sees a three. That's the next character. The machine consumes the input, sees the three, and it, the three takes it into state Q2. In state Q2, the machine sees a 4. The 4 keeps the machine in state Q2. That's the end of the string. The machine lights the light because we are in an accepting state. In contrast, if you had 3 plus 4, then what would happen is the machine sees the first character 3. The machine sees the first character 3, and it bounces to Q2. The machine now sees a plus sign, but plus sign isn't any of the characters 0 through 9. So the machine goes down here to the state that's labeled E. I often have these kind of garbage can states that are labeled E. That stands for error. Once you've made an error, you can't recover. So anything at all will keep you in the error state. The machine sees a, a 4. It stays in the error state. And at the end, the, when the 4 is consumed, the machine doesn't light the red light because it's, it's not going to accept that 3 plus 4 is not a valid representation of an integer. Okay, so again, you see the table here, the, and the table is clearly just a simpl simply a different way of representing the, uh, the diagram, especially handy in some circumstances. For example, if you had a very large diagram. But you'll also see that I'm willing to abbreviate by having some columns carry more than one designation. So I'm uh, going to go through a couple of machines that, that do something with the first three letters of my last name, just to try to give some feel for the kind of general things that these machines can do. OK, so here is a machine that accepts only one string. It's the string that consists of three letters, capital H, capital E, capital F. That's it. So here, this machine, you see this garbage can state down at the bottom. So uh, if this machine sees an H as the first character, then it goes to Q1. If the machine sees anything other than an H as the first character, it goes into the garbage state and it never leaves. If the machine sees the H as the first character, it's in Q1. And now if the second character is in E, it goes to Q2. But if the second character isn't in E, then it goes down to the error state. If the third character is an F, then the machine goes to Q3. If the third character isn't an F, you get the idea. And then finally, don't miss this point. If, the f if there is a fourth character, if there is anything at all, the machine goes to an error state. And once you're in an error state, you stay in the error state, and that's all there is to it. When you end up consuming the string, maybe the string is H, E, F, M, 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 N, Q, X, R. When the machine finishes consuming the string, it's still in the error state. The light doesn't get lit. 
Okay, so one thing these machines can do is accept particular single strings. Any other string gets not accepted, you can say it gets rejected. This machine, this particular machine, accepts only strings where H, E, F is the prefix. So it looks a lot like the previous machine, except that when you get to the F here, uh, there isn't this arrow out that says any leading to the error state. Instead, the arrow, once you get into Q3, you stay in Q3 because you've seen H, E, F as the prefix, and anything now is, is uh, still going to be an accepted string. Okay, so anything now is considered an okay string. The machine will like it, and so at the end, the machine will, uh, will light the red light. When, once the machine has consumed this entire string, say my last name, then, then the machine will like it and, and will light the red light. So I did prefix. Can you do suffix? You can do suffix, although suffix proves to be a little more complicated. Let's have a look. So if the machine sees, for example, uh, A, B, H, E, F, well, you've got to have the machine sort of mark time here for a while while it's reading the A, B. So the machine is, is uh, sort of mining its P and Q's, reading the A, B, thinking maybe there's going to be an H, E, F. We'll see. If there is an H, then the machine moves over to Q1. But wait a minute, you don't know that that's the good H. I mean, it might be that the string you're getting in is uh, M H B H E F. So you got, you got to be careful about seeing that H, is that you don't want to permanently commit that this is, this is the one. So instead, what happens here is that uh, the machine moves to Q1, but if it sees anything else as the next character, anything other than an E, if it sees, for example, HB, well, then the machine will move back to Q0. So in some sort of intuitive sense, Q0 means something like uh, waiting to see if we're getting to the end is, and it's an HEF. But if we're seeing like sort of arbitrary characters, we're just kind of waiting. So if I feed this A, B, H, M, H, E, F, then the A, B will take it around in a circle. The H takes it over, but that's a false alarm. It comes back with the M. And now H, E, F brings it over. So the complication here is uh, what happens when you see sort of these uh, uh, false alarms. So uh, H, E, for example, takes you to Q2, but what if that isn't, re the, what if that isn't the end of the string? Well, then two things can happen. If you see H, E, K, for example, then you've got to go back here to Q0. But watch out for this. If you see H, E, H, then you don't go back to Q0. Instead, H, E, H takes you to Q1. So Q1 has the intuitive meaning of something like we've just seen an H, and we're wondering if this is going to be the, 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 the suffix. So there's an asymmetry here between the H and the E that I want to point out why I did a oh, suffix of length 3 instead of a length 2. There's no sort of a loop involving E, because if you see a, a bunch of characters and then an H, E, E, okay, well, that's different than if you see a bunch of characters and an H, H. Because if you see a bunch of characters and an H, H, it could be that the second H is the start of the, of the desired suffix. But if you see a bunch of characters in an H, E, E, it's not going to be the case that this E is part of, a of the desired suffix. Okay. Anyway, a fine point, but, but an important one, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So uh, a, a point that uh, it's been my experience, it's easy to get wrong. Okay, but so we can do prefixes, and with a little head scratching, we can do suffixes. So these finite state machines, machines without memory, are not completely useless. I mean, there are some things that they can do. Here's another example. What about H, E, F in the middle? And the answer is yes. We can recognize input strings that have, uh, we can recognize input strings that have H, E, F anywhere in them. So basically what you do is, uh, if you see things other than H, you're just kind of marking time. If you see that H, you move over to Q1, that intuitively means something like saw an H, thinking that we, we might be looking for an EF, or we might be not. If you see anything other than an E, back you go to Q0. If you, excuse me, if you see anything other than an E or an H, you go back to Q0. If you see a second H, then you're back to Q1 again, just like we talked about a minute ago. If you see HE, why then, here you are in Q2. If you then see an H, and we talked about this a minute ago, you don't want to go back to Q0, you want to go back to Q1. 
And then finally, if you see an H followed by an E followed by an F, well, now you've seen a substring. Once you've seen a substring, you, you can, you know, sit back and put your feet up because there's no need to do more work. So here we are, we're looking at, we're look, we're looking at uh, any string at all at the end will still result in the machine accepting. Okay. Okay, so these machines can do prefixes, suffixes, uh, substrings. They're not completely dopey. One more thing that these machines can do, this machine accepts, oops, hit the, hit the wrong button. These machines accept only strength consisting of zero or more repetitions of HEF. So if it says HEF, HEF, the machine will accept it. If it says HEF, B, HEF, the machine won't. So you see what's going to happen. I have a size 3 loop, H-E-F, 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 H-E-F. If at any point you see something other than the next character you're looking for, down you go to the error state and you're out. There's no way you can accept at that point. The only thing to watch out for here, it seems to me, is the zero or more repetitions. And this is a point that tricks that catches people up. I, I've been caught up by it. I, it's got to be in the hundreds, maybe approaching a thousand times in my life. We'll talk about it later on when we talk about regular expressions. But zero or more repetitions of HEF. So if I give this machine HEF, HEF, the machine will like it. Great. If I give the oh, check mark, the machine will like it. If I give this machine the empty string, I never know how to designate the empty string. You could write just an empty string, or you could write the empty string as, as this kind of epsilon. If I give this machine an empty string, the machine starts in state Q0, and because this, the input is empty, it instantly consumes the input, doesn't do anything, and is now in a halting state. So that's right. You, for, in order to have the empty string, zero repetitions of HEF, in order to have that accepted, you need to have Q0 be a double circle state, be a final state, be an accepting state. Okay, so that's something we've never seen before. And last thing, I, I, I can't let go of this point about uh, the, the zero or more repetitions being tricky. So here is, uh, here is a machine that accepts, uh, that accepts all strings that start with, that have a prefix of zero or more. So start with, have a prefix of zero or more. Oops, I lost my mouse. There we go. Starting with zero or more copy, co copies of HEF. So a person starts thinking to himself, okay, so HEF, HEF, BK. It's supposed to accept that, okay? And uh, it's supposed to accept HEF followed by nothing. It's also supposed to accept HEF followed by uh, RM. And I suppose you could put an HEF there if you want, because that's perfectly perfectly okay. It has a prefix of HEF, so I think that's those are all okay. But you can see, you, I know you can read, this is a gotcha question. In fact, it's the zero or more again, where it says zero, a prefix of zero or more copies. And every string has a prefix of HEF. For example, if I give you this string ZMR, why that has a prefix. It has zero many HEFs at the start. So it's a trick question. So in fact, this is a machine, the kind of the, the uh, uh, the, the sort of dummy machine. This machine accepts every string, and uh, at, and that's because the description I gave it isn't transparently obvious that every string matches the description I gave, but it does. Every string with the right alphabet matches the description I gave. Okay, okay. So uh, so so did a couple of examples that illustrate what machines can do, and now just kind of want to sort of. Uh, 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 try to uh, underline a couple points about machines. So uh, so here I want I showed how to accept uh, how to write down a machine that accepts only HEF. Well here's a machine that accepts only CAT or DOG, no other string. So you can accept only a single string. Can you accept only two strings? And the answer is yes. You see what happens here. CAT takes you off in this direction. So this looks like the HEF that I had at the start. And DOG takes you off in this direction. DOG takes you off in this direction. So CAT, DOG, nothing else. So you can do one single string, two strings. Obviously, you could do five strings using the same technique. Okay, so these machines can do, there are some jobs these machines can do. 
Can these machines, for example, accept strings that consist only of a prime number of, of, of ones? Well, the answer is no. We haven't proved that yet. We will, of course. But, so there are things these machines can't do, but they can do a lot of things. Here's a machine that can accept only strings with an even number of A's. So uh, the first A takes you over there, the second A takes you back. If you see some B's along the way, okay, that's, that's fine, to mark, your, mark your place. But anyway, the, the A's take you over and back. So in some sense, Q1 intuitively means something like we've seen an odd number of A's. It might be one, it might be three, it might be five, it's, but it's an odd number of A's. And uh, Q0 intuitively means something like we've seen an even number of A's, including zero many A's. So this machine will accept the string that contains, say, B, 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 B. So B, 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 because it has an even number of A's, namely zero many. So I keep hitting on that zero because that's the real, that's the gotcha, that's the snag. This machine accepts strings with at least three A's. So uh, the first A takes you over to Q1, the second A takes you over to Q2, and the third A takes you over to Q3. So uh, one point I'm trying to make about these machines, and it, this gives me a chance to make it here, is that uh, when you're making up these machines, when you're, for example, doing a homework problem, when you're making up these machines, it should be the case that the states, each of them, have an intuitive meaning. You should be able to say to yourself something like what Q1 is here. Q1 is something like, if you wrote it out in an English sentence, scene 1A, looking to see that second A. Likewise up here, Q1 means scene an odd number of A's. Okay, so the, the state should have some intuitive meaning. I find that sometimes people, people read the description of what they're supposed to do, pick up a pencil and just start saying, well, there's an A, there's an A, there's an A, and that's okay for a, you know, a size four machine, a four state machine. But when you get to machines that are a little bigger, it starts, oh, I forgot to, to take the case of an odd number of bees, and it just starts getting to be spaghetti. Okay, when we introduce Turing machines, we of course uh, follow that by a definition, follow the definition of a Turing machine by a description of what it is that a Turing machine does. That is, try to make the point, that this is mathematics, that we can define what a Turing machine does and so we can give proofs. If somebody tries to say, you know, prove that a Turing machine can't do such and such a thing, well, according to the definition, we can do exactly the same thing for finite state machines. I'm not going to go through the whole definition. That's why you have a book. But the basic idea is very straightforward. The idea is that you have what, what we had with Turing machines. Also, you have a configuration. A configuration of a finite state machine is a pair, Q comma T, where Q is the current state and T is what's currently on the tape. Of course, when you start the machine, you always start in some state, and we take the convention of starting in Q0 because, I don't know, you've got to start somewhere, you might as well start in Q0. So we always start in Q0, and then there's got to be some string on the tape, and I'm calling that tau0. Tau0 is the input to the machine. So here, for example, is a machine, four states, and I'm going to give it the input A, B, A, B, A, B, B. So the initial configuration here, of course, is C0 equals, I'm going to start it in Q0. I could start it somewhere else, I suppose, but I'm going to start it in Q0. And, uh, and the tau0 is AB, AB, ABB. Darn this handwriting. Close the diamond brackets. Okay, and you can see that what happens here is that you start in, you start in the initial, initial, configuration here, Q0 and tau0, and then you go to a next configuration. You proceed from configuration to configuration discreetly and deterministically, from configuration to configuration discreetly to, to know that a step was taken according to the rules. We use this symbol here that you read out loud as yields. It's called the turnstile symbol. Anyway, you read it out loud as yields. And uh, it's easy to see that the the Drawing above, or else I could write the table, the drawing above says that if you're in Q0 and the first character is an A, why well, you're supposed to go to Q1. So you strip off the first character, you go to Q1. If you're in Q1 and the first character is a B, then you're supposed to strip off the first character and go to Q1. 
if you're in Q1 and the first character is in A, you're supposed to strip off the first character. You always strip off the first character. That's part of the definition of a finite state machine. Finite state machines consume their input. So you always strip off the first character and you go to the next state according to the diagram. At the end, you reach some configuration where there's an empty string. Because at each step you configure up, you excuse me, you, you strip off the first character, and so you know after after a while you've stripped off all the first characters. There you are at the empty string. The definition of what state is this machine in when it finishes is the state when you've got an empty string in. Okay, does it does it accept the string or not? Well, is Q3 a halting? Excuse me, an, a final state? Yes, Q3 is a final state. It's got a double circle, so we accept tau naught a b a b. A, B, B. All right, so, uh, so of course, this is just an example, just a sketch, the full descriptions in the book. But the point is that this is mathematics. You can write down a definition of what, for example, the yields symbol means. And uh, it's not the case that two different people could do two different things and say, well, I thought that was right. No, at least one, at least one of them didn't follow the rules. So the point of, of these machines is to understand what they can do. I mean, that's why we're studying them. What, what can these machines do? So these machines either accept strings or don't accept strings. We, we, we've stripped out the ability to give output other than lighting the light. So we can't do much with these machines. They either accept or don't accept. So we're defining that this collection of accepted strings is called the language of that machine. The collection of accepted strings is called the language of that machine. So in this case here, we're, we're looking at uh, script L of M. I'm in the habit of writing it that way. Um, a person with better handwriting than me can, can probably do a much better job with script L, but that's what you get from me. That's the language recognized or decided. Accepted is also a very common term, but there's some ambiguity between um, machine accepted a string and machine accepted a language. Anyway, uh, recognize is a good word. For finite state machines, we talked about this with languages, the difference between deciding and recognizing. And uh, because finite state machines always halt, so you're always going to get a decision, yes or no. So for finite state machines, deciding a language is the same as recognizing it, because the machine has to halt. But recognizing, it seems to me, to be the more common term. Nothing wrong with deciding, but more common term, so that's the term I'm going to use. So here's an example, time for, time for an example. So here's a machine, a moderately complicated machine, that accepts strings that represent a natural number that has, that's a multiple of three. For example, a 1, 5, or 5, 0, 1, 3, or let's try 21. Okay, so that's a string with two characters. You type those two characters onto the input tape, you press go, and you see what happens. So the machine starts in Q0, it strips off the leading character, the 2, and we follow the 2 arrow, we're down in state Q2. We're now in state Q2, and the, and the input has only, the input string is now down to length 1, a 1. So the next thing the machine does is strip off the 1 and move to, uh, move to the designated state, so there's a 1 there, strips off the 1, moves back to Q0. The, the input string is now empty. The machine is in state Q0. Q0 is an, an accepting state. So yes, Q2-1 got accepted. Okay, so basically what's happening here is this machine is based on the, the idea that a person learns you know, very early on that you can tell if a number is divisible by 3 by looking at the digits and adding them up and seeing if the sum is divisible by 3 kind of thing. So the language of this machine is all the strings, like 2-1 or like 1-5 or like 5013, all the strings where uh, sigma is the decimal representation of a multiple of 3. 2-1 would get accepted, 2-2 two, two would not. So let's try 2-2. Two, two. And we know what's going to happen with the 2. You strip off the leading character, the 2 brings you down to state Q2. Now the, the machine sees a 2 as the first character on the tape, it strips it off, it, that brings the machine over to state Q1. O okay, so the machine's in state Q1, Q1 means something like uh, remainder modulo 3, but anyway, Q Q Q1 and the machine stops. It's not a, a final state, so the light doesn't light, so that 2-2 so that two, two did not get accepted, 2-2 two, two did not get accepted, 2-2 two, two is not in the language of this machine. Okay, so some strings are in, some strings are not, and of course, we're going to ask the question, what languages can this machine do? 
And these machines, the only thing they can do is accept or not accept strings. They can't do things like, like have an output. So to compare the strength of, say, this machine and a Turing machine, finite state machines and Turing machines, we're going to have to compare them language for language because the only thing these machines can do is languages. One point I want to make about finite state machines is that finite state machines are easy to code. That is, one advantage of finite state machines is that they translate instantly into code. When you write down a Turing machine, it's not perfectly clear how to translate it to code, but for finite state machines, it is. So can you see here, this says state 0, this says state 1, and this says state 2, or it actually says else, but you know what else is. And then at the end, if the machine is in state 0 at the end, then you accept. If the machine is not in state 0, then you don't accept. What about this stuff in the middle here? If you're in state 0 and the character you just read is a 0, 3, 6, or 9, what's that about? Well, you just go back to the diagram. If you're in state 0 and the character is a 0, 3, 6, or 9, the character is a 0. So I just simply directly translated. I directly translated the, the diagram into code, and it translates in a very straightforward way. In fact, <clears throat> excuse me, it should be clear that if you didn't write down the diagram but instead wrote down the table, right, the, 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 the delta table, if you express this as a table rather than a diagram, then you can immediately convert that table. You can write a program that converts the table into code. If you give me a finite state machine, so the idea here is that your program you just wrote is give me a finite state machine and I'll spit out code that acts like that finite state machine. So finite state machines translate easily to code, in fact, so easily that you can write a program to write the programs. Boy, that's easy. Okay, okay one more thing to talk about here, and that is um, extended transition functions. So. Uh, we are going to want to talk about what happens if the machine takes, for example, a string like 2, 2. So we've talked so far about what happens when the machine takes a single character. Now I want to be able to talk about what happens when the machine takes a string. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's the extended transition function. So we've talked about what happens when the machine takes a single character. There it is, the, 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 the function delta. Delta takes in current state and current character and then gives you a new state. Well, I want to talk about what happens when you feed the machine individual strings like 2-2 uh, uh, two, two, or uh, uh, 5 one 3 or whatever it was on the previous slide. So the extended transition function, you see the little hat on the delta, so that's meant to indicate that it's related to delta but not equal to delta. It does not take the current state because it always starts in state Q0. And, and really, it's a very straightforward idea. The idea is simply that you, you feed this machine, I happen to be working with this machine, you feed this machine the strings and ask what state does it end in. So I have the table below, so I'll, for example, feed this machine, machine BA. And I'll just follow it through. Well, the B takes it to state Q0, the A takes it to state Q1, so I wrote down under BA, I wrote down Q1. And it's just that straightforward. I can ask, what states does this machine end in when you feed it various inputs? And the inputs can be longer than one. Here, with delta, the inputs are only single characters. But with delta hat, the inputs can be strings longer than one. And you always start in the start state. OK, and we'll call that the extended transition function for the obvious reason that if you feed this delta hat. If you feed it individual characters, then it looks an awful lot like delta. But, if you, but the advantage of delta hat is that it will take things longer than individual characters. It will take uh, whole strings. Okay, very good. A lot, lot, uh, lot of progress on finite state machines. So, uh, so good, good place to stop.